Welcome back to Northwest City Politics in the Know with Juanita. We're happy to greet you again this week. We're glad that you're tuning in on our show because we're always happy for people that are interested in the issues that are happening in our cities. If you haven't watched us before, each week we'll have somebody from one of the nine cities in CCX's viewing area, probably a mayor or a city council person, telling us about what are the current issues that that city is facing or what maybe some of the things that are getting planned for the future. And we ask you, if it's your city, be sure to take down their name and their email and phone number so that if some of the issues that we talk about resonate and you care about, that you can be in contact with them. Then I'm very happy tonight to welcome Steve Schmidtkall, who's on the Golden Valley City Council, who's been on our show before. Mm -hmm. So we're glad to welcome you back. Thank you, Juanita. I always enjoy our conversations and uh, every now and then you'll stump me up on something <laughs> that I should know about, but do not. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. I've been on the city council now for, this will be my seventh uh -huh. year. As you recall, I was uh, appointed right. for the second year of Mike Freiberg's term. Uh, and before that, I was nine years on the Golden Valley Planning Commission. So that was good, good preparation. Oh, right. A lot of experience so, with what's happening in yes, the cities. Yep. And maybe you could share a little bit about your time in Golden Valley for the people out there that don't know you. People from Golden Valley probably have a pretty good idea, but there's go yeah. to all nine cities. So well, I, I always think about my oldest daughter because she uh -huh. was born shortly after we moved uh -huh. into Golden Valley, and she's 34 now. So uh -huh. uh, that's how long we've lived in Golden Valley. Uh, during my er early years in Golden Valley, I was more active in the school oh, in sure. District 281 because right. our our kids were going through that program. Uh, but then when they went off to college, um, I saw an opportunity to uh -huh. get on the planning commission and uh, uh, served there, as I said, for nine years and then was appointed to the city council. So. Yeah, we're always encouraging people out there to get involved. So it's good for them to hear about how other people got involved to the point of running for office, right? Yeah, and I'll tell you, we just appointed two young people ah. to commissions last night. Uh -huh. uh, we're always, it seems like there's a certain amount of turnover in our commissions, right. and we're always looking for new members, and for these young people especially. Uh, we've interviewed four high school uh -huh. students in the last, I'm going to say, month, uh -huh. and these are outstanding ah. students, really uh, high achievers. Right and they're going to serve on these commissions and it'll be excellent on their resume oh, right, as they make right. plans for college. So. And then bring some different viewpoints probably that you aren't hearing. Absolutely. Yep. Now, we talked about a number of issues beforehand, back and forth with yes, the email, yeah. right? And I thought we'll start off with something that was brand new last year, the Lime Bike Program. And I think it's bikes and scooters if I'm was reading things right but you're going to renew it now you had a, a like a trial period last summer into the fall maybe you can tell us a little bit about the program what it involves yes last summer we had lime bikes i believe we had uh, 50 bikes in uh -huh. the city they were kind of late getting onto the yeah. street and i i think the utilization of the bikes was maybe less than expected and i uh -huh. think there's kind of a shift over to the use of the scooters. Ah. We're going to have uh, July 20th is okay. when they're going to roll out the Lime scooters in Golden mm -hmm. Valley. Again, that, that's kind of late in the year. Minneapolis has had them on the streets for uh, several weeks ah. now. And we've also entered into an agreement with another vendor, oh. Spin Scooters. Uh -huh. For some reason, um, there's a, there's a third vendor, Bird, uh -huh. and for some reason they are not in Minneapolis this oh. year. And also Golden Valley limited, in our uh, ordinance, we limited it to two vendors. Uh -huh. So it'll be Spin and Lime. I myself took 58 scooter rides last ah, summer and enjoyed it very much. Yeah. It's called uh, Micro Transit uh -huh. or Last Mile Transit. <laughs> yeah, and you could, uh, you I, used, I used it to get from my office to uh -huh. another building that I frequently had meetings oh, sure. in last year. Now this year... Uh, I can't seem to find the scooters as readily ah. as I did last year. I've only had two trips so ah. far uh, in Minneapolis where I work. Yeah, because so. they're pretty popular with people, I think, aren't they? They're becoming more popular. We Golden Valley, I believe, is limiting the scooters to 200 this okay. year, which means the two vendors could each put 100 yeah. scooters out, which is 
way more scooters than we had last year and even more than the bikes we had last year. So yeah, I can see where scooters might be more attractive. Hop on them and I, they'll go, right? I see people all over Minneapolis yeah, riding the yeah. scooters. One thing that worries me a little bit though is uh, they don't seem appropriately, appropriately dressed for ah. it. I would encourage <laughs> scooter riders to have a bicycle Ooh, helmet. Right, and, uh, right. I also wear a reflectorized vest. Oh uh, yeah, so people can see you. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by a car. And so the, the scooter people pick what spots in the city to put them? Yes, there are uh, requirements uh, of where they need to be located. Okay. And most of the scooter companies, they put them out early in the morning. Right. They take them in and charge them overnight, put mm -hmm. them out early in the morning. So when you drive around in the morning, you can see them carefully parked uh, in rows, right. neatly out of the way. Right. And as the day goes on, they <laughs> kind of get dispersed. Right. Uh, I just saw on the news tonight, I'm sorry to report that uh, uh, I believe it was 53 scooters were vandalized oh. in St. Paul. Oh, uh, what a shame. Spin scooters. Yeah. Yeah, the company uh, said they've never seen anything like huh. that before. So they're investigating. And what kind of feedback are you hearing from people about the program after last summer? Well, the people that, that like the bikes and scooters rave about ah. it. Uh, the people that haven't tried it express uh, concerns about them being left on sidewalks uh -huh. or being left at bus stops. Uh, and admittedly, some people are not very careful about True. how they stole the scooters they when they're right. done riding them. And is there any time limit? I, there was a time limit to try it out last summer. Now is there a time limit on this program? For well, they don't. Um, last summer they told us they'd have the scooters out until the snow started ah. to fly. So um, I guess, I'm assuming it'll be something similar to that this summer. Oh, and we've had some long, nice falls, so that could give yeah, it an could, expanded could time nice, for people yeah. to try it. Yeah. What kind of a fun, a fun new trend? Oh, it's, uh, it's trend. Uh, <laughs> often the high point of my day, right? right in the school, right. it's a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, I think it looks like fun. I haven't tried it yet, but it looks like fun. And now let's switch over to something that there is a lot of. There is a lot of new development in Golden Valley, oh, yeah, right? Yeah. You can see it yep. popping up all around. and. I've got it divided under projects that are recently completed, some that are under development, and some that are just approved. So we'll take it in a section sure. at a time. But maybe you can tell us about the recently completed ones, and I'll, I'll give you the title or the name of it, but when they were completed, kind of where they're located, maybe mm -hmm. located first, and then kind of what benefits you see that project bring into your city. Uh, one of them is under pressure brewing. Boy, we, the city council worked with uh, folks under pressure brewing for several years ah. uh, before they, they finally opened for business. I believe they opened for business right around uh, uh, the first of the year. Uh -huh. And they had kind of a soft opening that went on for a couple of weeks. Now they have a pretty strong presence mm. on the internet. They're sharing their, uh, the food trucks that are coming there. Uh -huh. They have trivia nights uh -huh. and other events. Um, they had uh, sword fighting or something oh. one night recently, which I, I thought that pretty unusual. No, but, right. Uh, they started out with three taps. Now uh -huh. they're up to uh, 20. Ah. Uh, the brewer, uh, Lori Ertle, she's an award-winning brewer. Ah. She's won many, many awards for several of her beers. So it's a, uh, it's a fun place to go. They've uh, created like a library room in there ah. using real books. Right that they acquired from Empty the Nest, a nearby uh -huh. business. So I, sadly, I admit I haven't been there uh -huh. in a, you know, several weeks, but uh, it's a very nice place. I would Where is it located? It's located on, um, uh, across the street from the uh, True Stone oh, Bank right, and, and right, then the right. old Perkins building that has now become Lat 14 Okay, so restaurant. just on the it's other side. It's in that side. long white industrial uh -huh. Building. Well, I'll have to go look for it because I knew that I've heard of it, but I didn't know exactly where it was. Yeah, it's on the uh, east end of that building. Okay. So, and they've got quite a large space in there. Ah. I think they intend to eventually have fair-sized events sure. in there as well. They're, they've got an upstairs room that could accommodate fairly large events. Yeah, food so. trucks are kind of a good mechanism nowadays oh, yeah. to 
to put food with something else. Yeah, to make the uh, brewery happen, we had to pass an ordinance allowing tap rooms and breweries. Uh -huh. We had to pass an ordinance allowing food trucks. Uh -huh. And we also passed an ordinance allowing a distillery because at one time, under pressure was going to have a distiller friend oh. of theirs co-locate with sure. them. Now that ultimately didn't happen, uh. but uh, if you're out there and you want to <laughs> distill your product in Golden Valley, we're come, ready for come you. Come to Golden yeah. Valley. <laughs> it's yeah. a good place, right? <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and then another one, the Liberty. Liberty Crossing, yeah, that's up at uh, Medicine Lake Road at the north edge right. of our city, right at uh, Winnetka and Medicine Lake Road. Uh, I've met some of the residents. They mm -hmm. had a, an o a opening, a ribbon cutting, uh -huh. if you will, and, I, and at that event, I was able to talk to some residents. They love that place. Uh -huh. It has a, they have their own dog run, so their dogs oh. can, can uh, enjoy the outdoors. Yeah. And the city, the benefit to the city was this uh, very large underground concrete storage tank oh, for right, storm water. Right, right. And then they also created a, a storm water pond, if you will, a, a, so that project has really contributed mm -hmm. uh, to stormwater management. As you know, there were a number of homes around the Decola oh, yes. ponds uh, that were designated as potential mm -hmm. uh, for flooding in the 100-year storm or the 1% <laughs> That we keep storm. getting you know, yeah, every the, now and again. <laughs> they seem more frequent yeah. than that. Uh, but there's um, new work being done on the Decola ah. ponds. They're being expanded. There's another pond that's going to be added on, uh -huh. on uh, private property, on the uh, property owned by the apartment building to uh -huh. the north. They have offered that land uh -huh. as a stormwater pond. So the underground tank at Liberty, the uh, stormwater pond at Liberty is working with the, all the Decola ponds plus sure. that new pond. We're going to have an excellent uh, stormwater management system Yeah, that's there. Been, been a long-term project to figure out what to do and how to solve that issue. Well, yeah, there was uh, a time when somebody said, well, why not just uh, buy those homes? Well, we never wanted to do that. Yeah. That's, a, that's the neighborhood oh. that, um, that has the pumpkin festival every oh, fall. Right, it's a right. vital, very... Uh, uh, fun and active mm -hmm. neighborhood, and uh, and we wanted to do what we could to, oh, right. you know, to mitigate the flood issue and allow those people to to continue and to enjoy the neighborhood. So, so has there since they put all that in, has there been a major flooding area or time? Well, uh, we're still working. I um, took the tour the other night uh -huh. of the. Uh, uh, Bassett Creek Watershed Management oh, right. District. They're 50 years old this right, year. Right, right, I saw so, that. So uh, they had a bus tour and we visited mm -hmm. a, a number of sites including the uh, the Cola Ponds mm -hmm. project. And we're actually uh, making good progress on that end of town. Uh, they're over by Highway 169. Uh -huh. The city purchased two homes that were just chronically flooding uh, uh, so frequently right. that, uh, and the, the owners were uh, very cooperative. Uh -huh. they, were, they were very pleased with the arrangement. Uh, we bought the homes, created a stormwater management pond there. The issue there was that uh, the stormwater pipe that runs under 169 is smaller than it should uh -huh. be, so the water backs up. Right. And, um, it was much cheaper to buy the two homes and create mm -hmm. the management pond than it would have been to put Big a bigger that, pipe right, under right. 169. So you, gotta, you have to get a, 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 a response that solves the problem at the least cost, right? Yeah, you know, <laughs> you, you, always, you always hate to, you know, ask people to leave a, a neighborhood that right, maybe they right. enjoy, but uh, uh, like I said, they were very cooperative. Uh -huh. So okay, and. T I don't know how I'll say it right. Tallow? Tallow? Yeah, we just, uh, the city council, four of us actually were over at Tallow on ah. Tuesday of last week meeting with residents. And um, um, it's a nice place. I mean, I, I got a tour of the place. Uh -huh. uh, it turns out uh, the manager of, of it is a friend of one of my daughters. So oh. uh, he gave me a, uh -huh. a very nice tour. Right, they, right. they got a rooftop party facility with beautiful views of downtown. Now where is that uh, located? That's on uh, 
Interstate 394 yeah, and Highway I, 100. That's what I thought. It actually was built on uh, surplus uh, Minnesota uh, Department of Transportation ah. land that was acquired for the construction right. of Interstate 394 when they determined uh, they didn't need it all. And it, it wasn't super easy to get that land transferred mm -hmm. to a, a private developer, but you know, it, it took a few years and eventually they assembled a nice uh, parcel of land there. Uh, I would say they cater or market primarily maybe to young singles uh -huh. or young professionals. They've right. got a lot of amenities. They, uh, on the same site now, they're building a memory care and assisted oh. living unit. So um, I always, I've, many times I've said that one of my goals is to create uh, a variety of housing types in Golden Valley so that a person could spend right. the entire arc of their life mm -hmm. in Golden da Valley from being the young right. single professional to uh, maybe somebody that needs assisted living mm -hmm. and memory care. Uh, so. Uh, tallow is very nice. Uh, w one of the issues that that was uh, brought up is uh, there's inadequate parking on the uh. surface, and we think that might be because the uh, the cost to park in there's plenty of parking right. below the building, uh -huh. but the cost to park below the building is such that uh, many people make a decision to not right. pay that and park on the surface and then there's not ah. adequate parking on the surface so we'll um, you know maybe talk to the management sure. there and see see what can be done about that and the last one is Meadowbrook Elementary School did s and some expansion yeah that's in full swing right now they're adding a number of classrooms I believe and it's occurring in two phases okay uh, like a lot of school construction, the bulk of it occurs during the summer, right. you know, so it's right. to not interfere with teaching mm -hmm. activities. So this summer they're adding, I believe it's uh, three classrooms, and then um, the next summer they'll be adding, ah. I believe it's three more, as I recall. It was, um, and then they're taking an existing classroom and converting it into uh, toilet, you know, toilet oh, rooms sure. that need code. So. It's a very nice improvement mm. to the building. And in addition to that, they're doing some traffic management things. Oh, uh, that'd be important in the school. In the mornings, it's sometimes, uh, you know, there's kind of a conflict between the bicycle trail oh, that runs right. by there and, and uh, parents dropping off their kids in the morning. So uh, we're adding a turn lane and uh, some other things to make that safer for everybody. Yeah, because there's a lot of things around a building site that the city gets involved in, yeah, depending absolutely. on the project. Yeah, that's, uh, uh, you may have noticed Glenwood Avenue recently was striped for bike lanes. Oh, right. And so we can expect increased bike traffic mm -hmm. pass there. And also uh, Minneapolis is, is continuing the striping into oh, downtown. Oh, right. Yeah, so, they have. Uh, Okay, let's move on to what developments that are under construction. And again, where they're located, kind of when the construction got underway and the benefits and when they might be completed, if you know. Uh, Central Park West, or the residential? Yeah, I, I uh, honestly don't know too much about okay. that project. I know that the Central Park West development is a very large development that's kind of Parts of it are in St. Louis right. Park and parts right. of it in Golden Valley. Like um, I think even in the same building, right? Yeah, well, yeah. yes, that's true. In this residence, yeah. uh, we'll have to have a change in color of the mm -hmm. carpeting or something yeah. so they know which city they live in. Right. But the, um, the AC Hotel, for example, uh -huh. the hotel is actually located in St. Louis Park, but oh. their parking lot is located uh -huh. in Golden Valley. So um, we've we made a cooperative arrangement right. with the, the uh, building inspections department of st louis park to allow them to do the building inspections mm -hmm. and uh, you know so that the builder doesn't have to deal with oh, two right, different sets right. of uh, of inspectors so um, that's uh, uh, it's a b big and uh, it's a very good project for golden mm -hmm. valley we recently golden valley recently teamed up with destination st louis park oh, uh -huh. And uh, so that they would market oh, the only right. two hotels we have, uh -huh. which is Ramada and, uh, and Holiday Inn Express. Uh -huh. And so Destination St. Louis Park, and now they can market to larger conventions and 
and uh, and that area is right, right in the heart right. of all that. So yeah, I think over time cities are doing more and more things together where it makes sense. Yeah. Than oh, they uh, might absolutely. have in the past. Yeah. Yeah. And Global Point, a uh, Global senior Point, that's the assisted living and memory care that mm -hmm. I just mentioned. Uh, that's located next right. to Tallow. Yeah. And that is under construction. Uh, it looks like they've got, I don't know, six months to go or something mm. like that. So We're in the construction season, right? Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, it's really gratifying to see right. a lot of construction right. going on. Jaguar Land Rover. Yes. Uh, uh, Golden Valley is a proud home to a uh, number of automobile yes. dealerships and particularly the high-end automobiles. Uh -huh. And uh, this is located south of, um, of Highway uh, 394 and it's, there's kind of a strip of automobile right. dealerships there. And they're, they're um, creating more service bays mm -hmm. and uh, uh, just upgrading their facility. Their whole facility. Yep. Give it a little, give more available to people. And Laurel Ponds? Laurel Ponds is, uh, um, you might recall there was a time where we um, were approached by a, a lifespan. They wanted to create a school at that site for oh. uh, school aged children uh -huh. experiencing mental illness. It's right at Laurel and uh, uh, close to Pennsylvania Avenue. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, that was not approved. And um, a developer came along with this idea for, uh, there's 24 lots available. Uh -huh. they're, they're fairly, um, they're deep, narrow lots and they're fairly closely spaced, but it's a real nice sense of community. Uh -huh. I don't know quite how many homes, I'm gonna say there's eight or 10 homes right. that have been built in there, but as I said, the capacity was uh, gonna be 24 oh, homes total. So uh, I think the, I haven't ta talked to anyone living there, but uh -huh. they, they look nice, and I, th I suspect that that closeness will be a nice neighborhood feel. We were looking recently at where, where it was quite close <coughs> together or versus the townhouses that are all built onto each other, and it gives it a little more of a neighborhood feeling, I yeah, think. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, in my mind, it's not unlike the, uh, the Hidden Lakes development, oh. which are, those are fairly large yep. homes, but they're very closely right. spaced compared to other similar but, homes. So you have all kinds of choices in yes, Golden Valley. Yes, uh, indeed. And then Shewitt Companies, did I say that right? Yeah, that's the building that's being built where the old uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken and oh, Taco Bell. Yeah. And I'm uh, uh, very pleased at the uh, number of, of uh, units that were able to mm -hmm. be built on that site. Uh, and it's a great location right off Highway 55, right, right close to the, all the amenities mm -hmm. of Golden Valley's uh, downtown area. So um, that looks to me like it's got several more months to go uh -huh. to. They're just putting up the exterior cladding. So Yeah, once, it, once, once you get a plan developed, then the city just checks things off as they go along, right? That's right, yeah. yeah they, um, this was all approved in their early development right. stages by our, our uh, planning review people, mm -hmm. planning and uh, uh, building inspections. And, yeah, uh, I can't remember, I think it might have been last summer, that you were going to add about 2,000 apartments to your city in all well, these different well places. The and these, you're well on your way projects. with the ones yeah, that we're absolutely. looking at. These, these are typically 150 to uh, uh, Tallow right. is 300, I believe 340 yeah. units. So that's a big one, yeah. Yeah, increase your population, right? Well, um, and I say this often, it's a worldwide phenomenon, not just a U.S. thing uh -huh. or a Minnesota thing or Golden Valley thing, but uh, all over the world, people are migrating right. into urban areas. Right. And um, I think there may be some people in Golden Valley that would like to shut the door uh, and yeah. just keep everything as it is, but I, I think they're in the minority. I think uh -huh. most of us recognize that um, we need to make room for right more new neighbors right. and and, uh, and, and it, I think it, we can do that in Golden Golden Valley is pretty built up as you know oh yeah you are but I think we have many opportunities at what I call the edges uh -huh. or like along Highway 55 oh, right. or along 100 uh, along Douglas Drive I'm mm -hmm. looking forward to those new uh, row houses that oh, are going to yeah. be that are yeah. shown in the original right. design for Douglas Drive so I think we have opportunities mm -hmm. uh, to create um, living choices for right. people 
and I think we can still protect that uh, those single-family detached home neighborhoods oh, right, right. that are kind of the fabric of Golden right. Valley. So. Yeah, then you increase what's available to people. Absolutely, choices, yep. And the Xenia. Xenia, boy, I'll tell you, um, I'm, <clears throat> uh, they're operating very slowly there. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, you know, in fact, some of us on the council have asked recently, I, yeah. I became concerned that the project had stopped because uh -huh. uh, I'd drive by the project many times and there Nothing seemed to be happening. no <laughs> evidence of any work right. being done since the last time I went by. Uh, but we do, you know, the uh, Mark Nabinski, the head of uh, physical development uh -huh. for our city, did reach out to the developer and he was assured that, yes, they are continuing yeah. to build. Um, apparently, it's the Schlossberg company out of Omaha, oh. Nebraska, and apparently they uh, don't like to borrow money. They oh. like to just fund everything with uh -huh. their own money, and so they just they own the property. When and, they get uh, there, they get yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, they just move along at wow. their own leisurely pace, I guess. Right, but, right. Uh, but I worry when building materials are exposed to oh, the weather right. like that for a long time that they might get uh, yeah, ruined a little bit. Yeah, you wonder about that, right. So, but... So that's going to be a fantastic development. Uh -huh. I just wish they'd uh, pick up the pace a little <laughs> bit. And now let's move to ones that were just recently approved in uh, Central Park West, an office building. You know, that again is an example of, I think that building is in St. Louis Park with the parking. Yeah, in that's Golden what I was Valley. thinking. It was so, one of those. Uh, but I, uh, that, as I said, we've got the uh, AC hotel over uh -huh. there, uh, residential. Uh, the shops at West End are in the St. Louis Park side. I mean, it's a very vital growing area. Oh, it is very popular. And, uh, very popular. I'm very excited that yeah. uh, Golden Valley has a little yeah. piece of the pie over there. <laughs> Enjoy that. Uh, and are there some new businesses coming into Golden Valley recently or in the future that you're aware of? Hmm. I mean, these are a lot of new developments. I just, in besides the well, ones being constructed. Oh, I, uh, one of my favorite new businesses uh -huh. is the Lat 14 restaurant. Oh, right, right. Um, that is really a destination mm -hmm. restaurant. It's uh, gotten glowing reviews. Yes, it has. It's, you still can't get in there without mm. uh, making reservations weeks ahead of time. Ah. Uh, so I hope they're enjoying good success. They, um, uh, it's, a, it's kind of a fusion concept of mm -hmm. uh, Asian food from a long latitude 14 so it, yeah, I it's a made variety it there. I keep thinking things. about it but like you said they're usually busy <laughs> well uh, sometimes you can sneak Probably in there lunch. and sit at the bar without a reservation oh that's true so then you could still try it out yeah yeah you can uh, and I noticed uh, I've only been there twice for full-blown yeah. meals and uh, uh, the recipe or the uh, menu is different each time, so oh. that's exciting. They oh, make that's kind of fun. new stuff right. each time. Right. Yeah. yeah, I like to try new things yeah. out. Yeah. So, for people. So. Well, I want to thank you so much. Well, thank for you, Juanita. I always, uh, always time enjoy and expertise with our audience with out there, and we'll encourage you out there to tune in next week because we'll have part two of Golden Valley Issues. We're glad that you've been with us, and we hope you come back. Bye.